Wow. Thank you, Governor, for your inspirational leadership and your challenge to all of us to better serve the people of Hawaii with an effective and efficient digital government. As you heard from the Governor, it's all about unity of purpose. It's all about working together so that we can walk the talk. It's all about turning into can do, and we can do, by the way. It's also about turning data in, with context into information and with experience into knowledge and wisdom. Some of us who've got gray hair have a little wisdom, but every now and then we're not quite sure. We need a little bit more data. But I just want to just say this is a tremendous opportunity, and you learn from the governor and his passion. That's one of the reasons I came here. There are two reasons I came here to Hawaii. His leadership really inspired me. I, I knew he cared. And he told me from the very, from the very beginning what he, how much he cares for Hawaii and how much he wants to do the best thing for Hawaii, and, and Hawaii can be the best. And that's what inspired me to come, because definitely we have some challenges. We are a little bit behind. I said 20 plus, I meant 30. We have some challenges, but the people, the aloha spirit, and what you have done is really what's inspired me. So first, let me just say thank you to all of you for coming today and choosing to engage in this journey, because it's a journey. It's going to take a while. I'd like to do it in uh, DC time, but even DC doesn't quite get it, as you can just see. <laughs> We have some challenges, but we need to unite, and I think that is our strength, and we need to capitalize on that. We need a positive path for the people of Hawaii, and that's what we've uh, established. By learning from our past, by implementing changes in the present, and realizing a be better future for Akeki and Kupuna. I sense the excitement and the commitment. You, you, you felt the commitment, and the energy in the room to work together to, to, to achieve this. This is something I'm doing from my heart. Today is a unique day, by the way, Governor. For the first time, I'm not going to use PowerPoint. This is, this is a scary venture for me. <laughs> uh, Randy did it, by the way. <laughs> but we need to work together to serve our citizens and residents. Because these are the family, our relatives, our friends, and members of our extended ohana. This is why we're here. We, we joined the government because we want to serve. We're public servants. And the governor is exactly right. For a long time, I think the government staff has been bashed un unfairly, in my, I might add, across the country, and especially in Hawaii as well, with reductions and so on and so forth. The governor has shown commitment from day one for the people. So we are going to invest in the people. We are going to grow the economy, and we're going to transform government. But let's have some fun and actually achieve something. At the end of the day, you all know in your hearts, you all know in your hearts that we don't do it for the money, right? Everyone agrees with that? We do it because we care. We do it because we care, because we provide services to our people and our citizens and residents. And when you see that, that is the inner satisfaction that we get out of this. Success, and success breeds success. So let me just say first, my thanks to the government staff for your pride in public service. Especially during these hard times, you have exemplified and I choose the words very carefully. By the way, the governor uses fantastic vocabulary, so I'm, I'm, I'm improving, sir. Resilience, resourcefulness, professionalism, and above all, you are good stewards of the important and critical services that our citizens need for every day in their daily lives. Make no mistake about it. Hawaii provides 220 business functions and services and hundreds of business processes, our citizens and residents depend on these. That's an awesome responsibility that we have. I know that somehow you've kept the state going. You've kept the state operational, despite very, very tough circumstances. In some cases, I think a 50% cut in some areas from the previous administrations. And we thank you for your service and commitment, but we're going forward. We're not looking at the past. We're not, we're not looking at the past. We're not blaming anyone. We're just we have a positive path forward. And the governor's New Day plan and our transformation plan lays the, lays the plan. It's the first ever that's published in the state of Hawaii. And it's been noticed. It's been noticed in, in DC. It's been noticed across all the 50 states. It's been noticed in other countries. And I've been approached by several people and say, hey, what's going on in Hawaii? They thought we were on the beach, and we're not. We actually work here. The state of Hawaii Encapsulated is an enterprise of medium-sized scope complexity. Our CEO is Governor Abercrombie. We have a budget of $11 billion, 
about 30% federal. About 1.4% 1 1 is in IT, 1.4%. It's a little below the 3 to 5% over time. That's what the governor was saying. But our, his administration has taken the first step to actually documenting this and, and, and looking at exactly what's going on. We serve 1.4 million residents and citizens of Hawaii with about 41,000 state employees. And 1.8% of this is IT. It's a little low, but 700, 750 people that, that I can find and count for so far. We have 18 departments, 108 attached agencies, and 162 boards and commissions, and we have decentralized IT. That's a challenge, but as the governor said, you're ready for the challenge? And I said, absolutely. But I can work together. I don't need everything centralized. Let's work together first and come up with a collaborative solution that we can all come up with and go forward. We have 35 lines of business that we provide across these 18 departments. 220 business functions and services and hundreds of complex manual, silo, paper-based processes. That's why the citizens have to wait in line. Less than 5% of our services are online. The world is changing. My mobile device has been taken away since over the table because of radio inter interference. You mind holding up that radio, the, the, uh, the iPhone? The iPhone has changed the world. The Blackberry has changed the world. Well, for a while. <laughs> the Android is changing the world. The PDA, the iPad is changing the world. You can get all these services mobile, anywhere, anytime. That's the future. Well, the great thing is in great turnarounds and great opportunities wherever there's been a successful business case of this happening. People were able to leapfrog 30 years ahead to the latest technology. As Calbert Young, my counterpart, the CFO, has told me, don't give me the iPhone 5 as a metaphor. Give me iPhone 10. Let's go to the next. And that's what the governor's challenged me with, to come up with the next, to the next plan so that we can skate to where the puck's going to go. That's an ice hockey reference for Dale Aiello there. We also have a technology that's up to 30 years old, 743 fragmented systems that I have found in the confession booth. I opened the confession booth, everyone came in, confessed their sins, and 743 so far, sir. I think there are a few more sinners out there. We're gonna, we're gonna let them in. <laughs> we have weak interoperability, as the governor mentioned. We cannot share, it's called horizontal fusion. We cannot share across databases vital records that go from birth through death Sometimes, you know, not in Hawaii, but other places as well, there could be paying someone who's already passed away. In fact, there was a case on that. We've got to change that. But that's because you have to have information linkage across these databases. When I was in the intelligence community, I worked in the FBI for eight years. And after 9-11, I remember we worked our butt off seven days a week for eight years, many years. And it was all about linking the information. We call it connect the dots. All my engineering degrees, sir, didn't amount to anything. My kindergarten connect the dots really worked. <laughs> My point to you is connect the dots, I, I, I jest about that in a way, but it's really on a serious note. Connecting the dots means you connect all the databases and information, data together with the context and it becomes information. You get the key information that you need. And we did that. And I'm proud to say that a lot of the attacks were averted in the country, which I cannot talk about. But all I can say is the, the People of the intelligence community, law enforcement community, the DOD and others did a great job because they connected those dots. We can also do the same thing in, in the state because we have a lot of systems. We are like a mini U.S. government in one, 18 cabinets and 18 departments all in one working together, all these 740 uh, databases. You all know deep in your heart it's time for change. We've done a great job. You've done a great job in, in achieving and keeping the system alive. But we need to invest in an upgrade, right? It's about time before it's too late. While we have kept the system alive, somehow through your heroism, basically, the second word I learned when I came to Hawaii was puka. And we have some big pukas and small pukas, but we got plenty of pukas. And John, puka means hole, big hole. And we have it because of shortage of resources, but we need to fix it before we have a major crash because when a system goes down, the information is irretrievably lost, and our key services and benefits do not, are not provided to the citizens. As the governor mentioned, and as we mentioned before, a lot of our data centers are below sea level and one or two miles away from the water. That's not a good thing. So there is a call for action. 
and we need to change the way we do business. The good news is that the end of the world will not happen December 21, 2012. I got it from authority. But it's rather interesting that December 21, 2012, in a document, the Mayan civilization called Monument Six is what it's called. 26,000 years ago in the Ice Age, or the last Ice Age, is the same day that December 21st is when the Milky Way, the galaxy, the sun, and the Earth are all aligned with our equator at the same time. And so with this, there are some disturbances from the sun that can cause all kinds of uh, challenges. Well, that has a way to devastate electronics. So we've got to watch out for that. But again, the latest experts have said that 21, 12, uh, December 21 is uh, nothing bad's going to happen. So uh, we're all good there. But we also got to say that while the benefits of not investing are very clear, the benefits of investing in the change, as the governor has mentioned, are very clear as well. We can enable government to be more efficient. We can prepare our employees to be more effective and, and, and more productive through training and education, which is what we're going to do. Citizens get increased services from their government, and they can get it online anywhere they want it. Our vision is a myhawaii.gov portal where you can get all these services online. In fact, today on our website, you will see that Oceanet has taken our open data and come out with a, 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 an open free uh, My Mercy software that allows you to have better disaster preparedness so you can actually input that information and then you can geocode it and, and you can show on a website and you can give that information back. It's, it's like a 311, but it's a small mini kind of app, but we're going forward. All of these things, you'll see a lot more of these apps come out. But fundamentally, what the governor has challenged us with is we need to have a future competitive advantage for Hawaii. As the president put it, we are the tip of the spear. We are, Hawaii is a perfect spot to really take advantage of our location, our aloha, and also some of our, our people. So if we give them all the training and we give them the technology, and there have been plenty of Akamai, they have done a great job keeping all this thing going, if anyone can keep a VAX computer alive for 36 years by buying parts on eBay, I'm giving them a MacGyver Award. They can definitely take the new technology and take it to another level. So a, a technology-efficient government can attract business and investment in Hawaii's workforce will prepare us for the future. So we have good news for you. We have a plan. The governor gave me two years to come up with a full detailed plan working with the foundation. I'm pleased to announce that I've finished it in one. We also have initial funding. We got four and a half million dollars from the Hawaii Community Foundation, and thanks to the governor's support and the legislature's support, we got $25.3 million in a supplemental year. They didn't have to give us anything. But that started the journey. That tells me that they're serious. And we've begun to implement the plan with projects to create a digital government foundation to provide the services for citizens. One of the things that I did was I wanted to get collaboration across the 18 departments, and there were almost 150 people in the, in the collaborative groups. And there's another 100 people who signed up and said, let's help. The governor is really big on collaboration across organizational lines to make things happen. So here are some things that we did. First, we learned from industry, from federal and state government, best practices and lessons learned, and that resulted in, in four months, we first published a baseline assessment. In nine months, we published a transformation plan, how we can go into the future and bridge the gap over seven phases in 12 years. That coincides with the biennium. And within the first year, I already told you, we got the funding. And the governor, I'm pleased to say, has supported us fully in the biennium budget going forward. I can't talk about the number, but it's, it's fully supported. We have started to implement the top 10 programs and 30 mini projects, out of which 10 of them are already done, to show that we can do it. And that's another key principle. We've learned from the mistakes. We don't want the Big Bang, which is we work two or three years and then come up with a deliverable. We're going to start doing ev things every three months. Something's going to be up so that we can keep going and keep working together and, and, and working as a team. This is like Monty Teo. He's done us proud in the state, but he's part of a team. Every time you hear him talk, and you never thought I'm going to bring Monty Teo into the transformation, but it's all about timing. A governor did a release on that. What a great representation for our state, how he's conducted himself. But it's all about team if you hear him what he says, and I do the same thing. 
We have started to implement our top 10 programs, and we've also secured a B minus grade. Now, I never thought B minus would be a good grade, sir, but uh, it's not bad from where we were. <laughs> B minus for a uh, digital government survey is, is uh, definitely pretty good. And Michigan, who's here, and Utah are number one always. They're A. And John, I'm here to tell you that Hawaii, watch out for Hawaii. Its objects are larger than they appear, but <laughs> they're coming. <laughs> Just joking. Thank you, but uh, John and uh, Dave Bean have been very helpful to us and sharing because we have some friendly competition between our government, uh, government CIOs. And let me just say that the CIO for Michigan reports to John, but uh, we have tremendous sharing and that's the spirit, Governor, that's happening in America. We are working together and when that happens, the power really takes it to the next level. Our work is being noticed in Hawaii. On a national level, the National Association of State CIs across 50 states and the federal government. So we have a surprise guest for you. The governor mentioned him. I have the distinct honor of playing a videotaped message received yesterday, last night, from the federal government CIO, Steve Van Rokel, from the White House. Steve is in charge of the entire US government IT portfolio. Slightly more than 157 million we got. He controls 80 billion which we can't talk about. He was advisor of our plans. I met him two weeks ago, and I told him, you know, what's going on in Hawaii. I used to be in federal government, so I, I do have one degree of separation in DC, can know a lot of people there. But I told him from my heart what the governor's doing, and the governor obviously is very highly respected. And I told him what we're doing and what you're doing. And he was blown away. He was absolutely blown away. He's like, wow, what's going on in Hawaii? And he looked, read the plan, and he says, I said, would you like to uh, give a speech and come to Hawaii? He said, well, right now I can't travel, but I'd like to give you a video message, and he's done that. So here are his thoughts from the White House. If you can play the video, please. Aloha from the White House in Washington, D.C. I'm Stephen Van Rokel, the United States Chief Information Officer. I really regret that I cannot join you in person today and hope that you leave the Hawaiian Digital Government Summit with an enhanced appreciation for the power of IT to transform your government. The internet revolution of the 1990s brought about a life-changing shift in the way we consume and deliver information and services. From academic research, to travel, to personal and business communications, it also changed the way we, as people, interact and, and really expect to interact with our government. Today, I can pay my bills, buy plane tickets, book restaurant reservations, and contact my health care providers with the push of a button on my smartphone. I, like so many Americans, want this same smart, secure, instant access to government-provided services and government-housed information. Here in Washington, we're making that happen for all Americans. Earlier this year, President Obama and I issued a directive to make important federal services accessible anytime, anywhere, and on any device. The President charged me with developing a comprehensive strategy to build a 21st century digital government. We released this strategy back in May 2012, and the U.S. is already seeing the benefits. By opening up government data, we've stimulated innovation and entrepreneurship, uh, and what we're seeing now is a proliferation of a data economy fueled by our smart and secure government open data policies. Today, you'll hear firsthand from the CIO of the state of Hawaii about the power of IT to transform the way the state does business. I applaud him, Governor Abercrombie, and their colleagues in the Hawaiian State House for their tireless work to deliver better services and value to the citizens of Hawaii. As we look to the future, we must ensure IT is used to empower innovators within the public and private sectors and to deliver the next generation of citizen-centric solutions to Americans. I look forward to working with all of you to shape this future and wish you a productive and inspiring day. Mahalo. Hello. Wow, that's pretty rare and it's a great honor for us to get, thank you, hey. So he sent us a tape message and he wanted to do this. And uh, so thank you very much for acknowledging that the things that he's talking about in open and digital government, a lot of things that I was doing before I came here, is possible, and not only possible, I will say this one thing, even though there's an $80 billion budget not counting the classified community that he oversees, he oversees the other one as well. Uh, the White House was spending about $30 million in terms of some of the programs, the federal cloud, the data.gov, the FedRAM, cloud security, 
the data center consolidation initiative, which is consolidating 20,000, I mean, 2,096 data centers and reducing them by 40% over five years to save money are similar kind of things that we have postulated in our vision, which has been reviewed with everybody and given chances to give comments, and then we publish it openly to the world. So our vision is very simple. <clears throat> Residents, citizens, state employees, and government and business partners can access the right information anywhere, anytime, on any device, securely and reliably, for any mission, through a portal, myhawaii.gov. This vision is really, really important because it tells us that everything that we do is about information. <clears throat> At the end of the day, do you really care about how it's provided? No, what you care about is the information that you need to get your job done. And, and you want it on a mobile device, and you can customize it on this portal so that you can get the information customized for you. And this is the kind of future that we're looking at. I'm happy to report that this is very also consistent with a mygov.gov portal that's coming out from the White House that is for the US government. So again, we're sharing government to government ideas as how we can go forward. <clears throat> so laying out this future, we can look at many, many examples of how this could be different. We can eliminate paper filings. And you can apply for online services where you know exactly how long it would take. Wouldn't it be nice that sometimes you take the right forms and go up to the counter and the lady or guy says, oops, you didn't bring the life, you know, you didn't bring this one extra form, so you've got to go back to the line and come back and reapply. And you just want to say, gosh darn it, right? And you end up saying, thank you very much, may I have another? <laughs> right? You know that there's a lot of variability in the environment and sometimes you don't even know how long it would serve. We have a lot of challenges like that. You wait in line for a long time. Wouldn't it be nice if you knew that everyone got the same shot it was three steps, and you can go to step two if you don't finish step one. And you just put it in there, and you're done. And that's what it's all about, online services. So instead of waiting in line, you can go online. So to realize this vision, we've done three things. There are three strategies. And I'd like you to just, uh, if you can jot this thing down or put it over here, it, it'd be great. First, we're focusing on the wrong thing. So we've got to focus on, number one, the mission services that the citizens need, re-engineer the business processes. <clears throat> provide those services and our apps so that the citizens and residents can get all this information. So focus on the citizen and the mission. That's really where, what we should be focusing on. Second, behind the scenes, we should be working on consolidating the infrastructure and having shared services so that the stuff works like a utility. It's like a network is always up, the computing works, the email works, all these sort of things, right? Well, guess what's happening? Because that, the second one is not working, people are spending time on that, when what really matters is the mission. And if you work with the mission, that's the satisfaction that you will get in, in serving the citizens. So that's what we've got to focus on. And third, we've got to have dashboards. We've got to have reviews so that the, the other word I learned, the first word I learned, and it was not aloha and mahalo, it was kuliana. And I learned what that word means. Kuliana means accountability and responsibility, and that's what I have. The governor, I, I, I need to do this. So we all need to do this. I ask you for your support to say, let's hold ourselves accountable, but we're going to help each other. We're going to help each other get these programs done. A lot of the programs in Hawaii, unfortunately, are a little bit behind, but we're going to help them through governance. So again, the three things are focus on the mission and the business processes and the apps, focusing towards the citizen and all the services we provide. Second, fix the infrastructure behind the scenes so that it works. Third, work on governance and dashboards and all these kind of things so that we can make these things happen and we can hold each other accountable and make things happen. And with that means policies, a process, and all those sort of things. So what this translates to is 10 programs. <clears throat> and the 10 programs that we're going to talk about today are lined up with these three strategies. So first, if I can put up the website, please, and we can uh, 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 show you what we're talking about. So. <clears throat> In this website, we have a lot of things in here, which is a new website based on mobile uh, first design, which you can actually, means it's responsive. You can actually put it on your mobile phone and it scales. We are one of the first three sites in the country that has done this. In this, uh, wow, this latest picture is already up. How do we do that? Even I didn't know we can have that capability. That's My Mercy launched yesterday and we have it right now. It's free for you to download it on iTunes. It's free for you to, uh, to download what I was talking about. But if I can go to the Programs tab, so if you see the Programs tab at the top, if you click that, please, 
<clears throat> these are the programs that we are launching. And these top 10 programs line up with those three strategies. So you can scroll down a little bit. The first one on the, on the top, there are five programs that re-engineer the business process and app for business. First one is called Enterprise Resource Planning, Health IT, Education, Tax Modernization, and Hawaii Broadband Initiative. You will see a lot of announcements coming out in the next couple of months about acquisitions and other things that we're going to be doing to launch these initiatives. These are flagship initiatives for the administration to make sure that enterprise resource planning allows us to get a financial system, HR, payroll, time and attendance, grants management, acquisition management, and all of that stuff together, budget and finance, in one system. Calbert is the executive sponsor of that. Randy is the program exec supporting it, and Paula is, is the ERP program manager making that happen. Health IT, many different departments, many different organizations uh, making that happen. These are big dollars. I think they're about $200 million so far that have been awarded on various things going forward. In health IT, we have obviously got Beth Geisting is the uh, healthcare coordinator, is the executive sponsor. I'm the program exec, and we have uh, uh, Mr. Pan Srivata. He is the program manager. What we're doing there is making sure all these different efforts from the connector to the exchange to the Medicaid eligibility system, to SNAP and TANF, and all the other things coming in, we can start integrating that information so that we can have a better health IT system. There's a lot of information up there. We need to connect people together. Education. Catherine Matayoshi is the exec sponsor. And we have David Wu is the, uh, is the executive in charge and program for this education program. Again, we're going to help education make sure that they can get the IT they need to connect the dots and also provide services for our kids and, and be more effective and efficient. Tax modernization. These folks have done a lot. They've done business process reengineering. We just recently completed some analytics. We found a lot of stuff. And we're about to release another acquisition working with uh, Fred Pablo and with Randy Baltimore to make sure that we can modernize the tax system and have more accountability and, and revenue and, and better revenue that we can uh, glean from what we have and use that to, to be more effective and efficient and also allow the citizens to engage easier with filings and so on and so forth. Hawaii Broadband Initiative. Now that the governor has left, uh, I just want to say great challenge is put in. That is, a, that is a massive challenge. One gigabit per second to every resident in Hawaii, affordably and ubiquitous by 2018. I said, sir, did you mean point one or did you say one? That requires, we'll be the number one state in the union and probably one of the first in the country by far. It, it, that goal is huge. We had a lot of challenges, but Keone Kali is up to the uh, task on that, and he is going to be the uh, program manager on that. I'm the exec, and uh, Bruce Copa is the exec sponsor. As you can see, these initiatives are, <clears throat> are absolutely groundbreaking and changing fundamentally how we do things. Below that, while we're focusing on all of that, that doesn't mean the rest of the programs uh, are just staying there. We keep on supporting them as well, but these five you've got to focus on because these are so transformational and, 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 and will, will have so much effect, positive effect. We're going to consolidate the infrastructure. We don't need all the different networks. We need one network so we can work together collaboratively. We're going to have enterprise shared services, so things like email, directory service, uh, security services can be provided that work, and they're provided like a utility so that we're all managed through a collaborative governance, meaning that all the CIOs work together to make that happen. We're going to have mission apps and open gov so that we don't have to go in COBOL. Nothing wrong with COBOL. People have done COBOL for a while, and it's been keeping us alive. But I think it's time to do the latest apps and go forward and have a way to do rapid application prototyping so we can get things done. We're going to buy some software and stuff in the cloud so you can have platform as a service, software as a service, and you can deploy these. And our staff, no matter what the age, can do this. By the way, I tell the young kids, I tell them about reverse discrimination. You know what that is, right? What that is, they think just because we got gray hair, we can't program. Oh, no, 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 no. People have write, written stuff from scratch. So I tell my kids and others, do nev never think that. You guys have it much easier. All the stuff's written for you. You embed it, and you're done. We had to write the stuff from scratch. Try that, and they can't do it, right? You take the calculator away, and uh, they're like, uh, let's see, you gave me $1. And I owe you, uh, let's see, uh, where's my calculator, right? So, uh, so everyone has a chance to come in and work together and make this thing happen. 
And security and privacy. Let's be very clear. Security and privacy is a big deal. It's a big, big deal. Our adversary, and I come from another world, darker world, I guess, which is uh, a uh, little bit more secretive. We know what's coming. And we got to watch out. And security is everyone's responsibility. We got to make sure that privacy and security is really, really important in making sure that our systems are secure because we're going to the digital world and that means that we are, uh, the adversary will come in. Some people say, hey, hey, bro. That's the other word I learned. He said, hey, you know, you, you know it's, it's safe right now. We just got paper. We just throw the paper away and you got SSN number on it, but no, we throw it away. It's fine. I'm like, no, 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 no. Uh, so he said, yeah, but you know, our systems are secure because even the hackers refuse to hack us. It's below their dignity to hack us right now, you know? <laughs> they said, oh, you hacked the COBOL system. They said, oh, no, come on, you know, you're out of here. So, yeah, I mean, I do agree that the latest systems are, uh, there's a little bit more information together and that makes us uh, uh, a tad more vulnerable. But we're going to put security from the start so that in the drywall, before it goes up, you put the, you put the security in there and privacy in there and, and, and we need to do it. But the benefits are tremendous. Now you can interact with information at your fingertips anywhere and you can go across. It's really powerful. It's, it's orders of magnitude better. And lastly, governance, the dashboards, and all the other policies and all that, so that it just works. So this is really important. So let me go to the home stretch here, because I know I've got to 10 minutes. And I'm right on schedule. <laughs> the vision of the future will take time to implement. And believe me, I'm very impatient. I like to get things done. What inspires me, it, what moves my heart and soul, is all about serving the great people of Hawaii. I, I've seen and I've been in organizations where I've implemented this before. I was in the Boeing company. I was at NASA. I was in FBI. I was an interior CIO. I was working with the Native Americans also. I've also worked in GSA supporting White House programs. And it's an honor and privilege to come to Hawaii. I'd like to show you that if you think it's not possible, just take that Mercy app and some of the other things going on. I'd like to show you a short video to tell you that this is a vision of the future, and some of this vision actually is going on today that I've seen in other organizations. But let me just give you this video, and if you can play the video, please. This is done from the USDHS, and it talks about emergency management a day in the life in the future in the digital world.
How's that? Wow. <clears throat> Wasn't that interesting? There are so many strategies that I've been talking about. They're all in there, actually, behind the scenes or front and center. Now, this is a little futuristic, but some of this stuff is real. Uh, we can do this. If you're skeptical, I told you about the My Mercy app. It's, oh, it's open. State Civil Defense have got a My Mercy app that has even a common operational picture behind the scenes that we've offered to State of New Jersey and others as to what Hawaii's got. Hawaii recently won the business registration app from DCCA, won top honors in the country, so that you can register your business online and make things happen. Uh, DOH is, uh, has been working and is uh, going to be releasing an illness app. There are a lot of things I can talk about, great stuff going on in Hawaii. So it's not about the technology. It's about what you can do to solve, to solve and help your relatives, help your, your, your neighbors, help the residents of Hawaii to use this technology for things that we want to solve. You, we live here. We know what they need. And if you put that together, that's the bridge between the mission and that's what makes it satisfying for us in our job, as opposed to the duplication that we're, we're working on. So let me, in, in, in conclusion, say the two or three things I want to just say in conclusion. First, what am I asking for? I'm asking for your help. This is not about me. This is not about my team. It's about you. It's about what you can do, not only as state employees, but also industry and citizens and residents of Hawaii. We all need to unite to be successful. A, ha a house divided shall fall. We know that from our history here, but any anywhere else. We are the tip of the spear, Brother President. We have a great once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, what's happening here. There are a lot of forces have come together to make this thing happen and transformation happen. We can keep our keiki here in a Hawaii-first approach so they have a future here as opposed to just going to the mainland. We are an island community. We all look out for each other. We need a unity of purpose, as the governor's mentioned. And we need to get around these top 10 programs. And we ask for all of you to support us in this journey and work together to move the community forward. We ask for our government partners and other stakeholders, and all of them are coming on board, by the way, and citizens, legislature, and industry to work together to succeed. I say, think global. We live in a global world. Singapore, South Korea have gone forward. We can do this. We can be the best. We can be the next. Let's seize this opportunity in our moment in history to do something great to, this, to restore Hawaii to its preeminence and give the citizens what they deserve, a digital government that is the envy of the world. Hawaii can be the center of a digital government that can leapfrog to the front. So we are at that crossroads in history. This is our time. It's high time. I say, ehele kako. Let's try for the summit. Let's go. Mahalo nui loa. We get the podium mic again, thank you. I'm a believer that uh, if Sonny can actually, as a CIO with a huge mission, message, stay on time, then this can actually be done in Hawaii. <laughs> this is very positive. As a magazine, Government Technology has been published for 26 years uh, this past November. We have been watching what states have done with technology that entire time, and we're really the only publication in the media world that only focuses on state and local government. What I can tell you about what you're about to do here is probably will pale in comparison to what we'll hear from our lunchtime keynote speaker, John Nixon. John has flown out here from Michigan in the middle of uh, a lot of very uh, challenging work at the state of Michigan. He's uh, the director of the Office of Technology Management and Budget there and was the budget director for the state of Utah. And you heard that Utah and Michigan received the only two A grades from the Center for Digital Government in the 2012 Digital States Survey. I want to point out that there is a commonality between those two states, and that is our lunchtime keynote, John Nixon. Uh, he was at both of those states and helped tremendously in their transformation efforts. And so what you're going to undertake here is something we're very excited to watch, we're excited to write about, we're excited to see what happens. It's a very challenging thing, and we have watched this in cities and counties and in states. And there are challenges. I spent a lot of time in New York City. I was there uh, just about immediately after Sandy hit. Imagine being in a, no a location where 
like Hawaii, water is always a threat. 200 to 300,000 cars will be totaled by the insurance companies, and these are residents, residents of the city of New York's personal vehicles, totaled because of Sandy. We have 20 police precincts that were shut down. Over 100 schools were shut down as a result of Sandy. Water where they never expected it. The MTA will have $5 billion worth of damages from one storm. And in spite of all of that, their resiliency brought the city back up. I don't know if you saw this, there's a new neighborhood. You've heard of Soho and maybe uh, Nolita, the north of Little Italy segment, or Tribeca. The new neighborhood is called Sopo, south of power. This is the area from 39th Street to the Battery that was without electricity for somewhere between three days and a week. So these outages are real for government. It's experienced everywhere. You'll experience it here. If you do not have success in your program, these outages are more challenging. You can't afford to do this. So it's great to see an investment here. We're very excited to watch and hopefully write about all of these successes. So it is now time for our break. We're at break in the exhibit area. And what I would like to do is have you, as a group, join me in thanking our sponsors for helping put this event together. Without them, we wouldn't be able to gather together today. So please join me in thanking them now. And the way you can also say thanks is to go up to them during the break and introduce yourself, find out a little about what they do. They're here to share with you. They would like to tell you about their organization and what they can bring to this process of transformation in Hawaii. So we will be in the break in the lounge from 1015 to 1045. We'll start all of our concurrent sessions. They're in a variety of rooms. There are signs placed. If you need assistance, please see us at the registration desk. We'll help you. And again, parking validation, now is the time to get it if you want it for the rest of the day or certainly before you go. But any time from now on at the Reg Desk, we can stamp your parking ticket for the Hilton Garages. Thank you for joining us for the morning's program. We'll see you back in here at lunch. <laughs>